Good morning, my name is Cynthia Mag. I'm the Director of Dramatic Pathology for Well Cornell Medicine. Our interesting case this week is going to be one that addresses an unusual lymphomatoid reaction in association with the COVID-19 vaccine. So the topic that we're going to address is COVID-19 vaccine-associated cutaneous lymphomatoid reactions. The COVID-19 vaccines that are currently available in the United States are mRNA vaccines that encode the full length of the spike glycoprotein, both the S1 subunit as well as the S2 subunit. The messenger RNA is endocytosed into a human myocyte, encoded to produce spike glycoprotein. The spike glycoprotein is then secreted and elicits a purely robust and effective adaptive T and B cell immune response. Not surprisingly, shortly after the introduction of the vaccine to the general public, we began to see skin reactions in association with the vaccine. And these reactions um, were, were quite interesting and was, were the basis of this paper entitled The Histologic and Molecular Correlates of COVID-19 Vaccine-Induced Changes in the Skin. We presented 22 patients with um, these unusual cutaneous reactions. Um, the majority of these patients had clinical and morphologic depictions of classic type four cutaneous hypersensitivity. Um, some cases resembled perniosis, uh, PR, pityriasis rubra pilaris and guttate psoriasis. We had one case of a leukocytoclastic vasculitis, probably reflective of the Marcus type three immune complex reaction. We also looked for spike glycoprotein and for evidence of systemic complex pathway activation in normal skin samples post-vaccination, as well as in the inflamed um, skin samples post-vaccination. And what we discovered um, was a very, very small amount of spike glycoprotein localized to ACE2 positive vessels in the deep dermis and subcutis without any evidence of classic complex pathway activation in contradistinction to patients with severe COVID, where we also examined normal skin and thrombosed skin, where the spike glycoprotein was localized to ACE2 positive vessels in the deep dermis and subcutis, but, uh, but in much larger quantities, and as well there was evidence of systemic uh, complement pathway activation. This is a very um, classic case of um, one of these COVID-19 vaccine reactions, the patient presented with an erythematous papular rash um, shortly following the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, the biopsy showed a, a lymphocyte-mediated interface dermatitis with evidence of epithelial injury. In addition, there was a lymphocytic vascular reaction and also an interstitial uh, granulomatous pattern as revealed by histiocytes scaffolding along collagen and elastic fibers. And it should be emphasized that these reactions, um, that these reactions that we reported in our paper uh, developed within two days up to about four weeks after receiving the first or second doses of the Pfizer or the uh, Moderna vaccine. So what is the basis of these vaccine triggered reactions in the skin? An adaptive T or B cell immune response to spike like a protein Although as a generalized immune response, since the amount of spike um, actually localized to the skin is so minimal. Another possibility, although less likely, is a type four immune response to some other component in the vaccine vehicle like polyethylene glycol. And then finally, the mRNA vaccines do have immune boosting properties and could in theory unmask subclinical cutaneous eruptions or uh, subclinical hypersensitivity uh, syndromes. One of the commonest patterns that we encountered in these um, cutaneous uh, reactions post-vaccination was an interface and granulomatous dermatitis with granulomatous and lymphocytic vasculitis, really um, characteristic for a type four hypersensitivity response to a microbial pathogen with superantigen properties. And indeed, spike like a protein has potent superantigen properties um, which means that it can actually stimulate a significant component of the T cell repertoire. Furthermore, spike-like protein induces a robust follicular helper T cell response. So not surprisingly, we began to um, uh, see 
lymphomatoid reactions, T cell lymphomatoid reactions in the setting of the vaccine, where the vaccine reactions were atypical cytomorphologically, um, architecturally, and phenotypically. And three cases uh, really come to mind. One was a 35-year-old male who developed primary cutaneous CD4 positive medium-sized uh, T cell lymphoproliferative disorder, which is a type of very low grade follicular helper T cell dyscrasia, one week after the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. There was an 18 year old male who developed lymphomatoid papulosis within one month following the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine that responded to methotrexate, and then the lymphomatoid papulosis recurred when he had a COVID 19 breakthrough infection. Um, and the final case was a 63-year-old female who developed a peripheral T-cell lymphoma that was temporally associated with receiving the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. In addition, there is minimal literature precedent. Um, there is one 79-year-old male who developed uh, a recurrence of lymphomatoid papulosis two days after the first dose of Pfizer. And there was another patient who developed angiomyoblastic lymphoma five months after receiving the Pfizer vaccine and then had worsening of his angiomyoblastic lymphoma, which is a follicular helper T cell lymphoma um, with the uh, booster. So I'm going to focus on this um, case of peripheral T cell lymphoma. So the patient was a 63-year-old female who developed a rash that was temporally associated with receiving the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The initial biopsies in April and May of 2021 were interpreted as uh, delayed hypersensitivity reactions, but because her rash uh, progressed, she had a repeat biopsy in June of 2021, which was interpreted as probable hypersensitivity, but with atypical lymphomatoid features. Um, and, and at that point, the differential diagnosis was one of an evolving T-cell lymphoproliferative disorder. The rash resolved, however, with steroids. The patient then developed a recurrence of her rash with the vaccine booster. Once again, with steroid intervention, the rash cleared. Um, but then she had a breakthrough COVID-19 infection, quickly recovered, but she developed new patches, plaques, and nodules. And since then, her rash has been progressive, and she has now developed um, peripheral lymphadenopathy. She was seen very recently uh, at the Hematology Oncology Clinic at Cornell, uh, where she was uh, found to have a very extensive skin rash and palpable adenopathy. So let's go over the skin biopsies that we have on this patient. So the initial set of biopsies in June of 2021, um, certainly at low power, shows a pattern that in fact, uh, one could see with the COVID-19 uh, vaccine associated uh, hypersensitivity reactions, and superficial to mid-dermal, interstitial, and perivascular lymphocytic and histiocytic infiltrate. However, under higher magnification, one can see that there is some component of atypia. Many of the lymphocytes around the blood vessel are small reactive lymphocytes, but there is an interposition of these intermediate to larger sized lymphoid forms, which in fact prevail in the intervascular interstitium. And these cells were proven to be phenotypically T cells, but they have an almost histocytoid appearance. Relative to these small reactive lymphocytes, they are larger, the chromatin is more open um, with moderate amounts of eosinophilic cytoplasms. Um, when she had the breakthrough infection and developed a worsening of her skin rash, two repeat biopsies were performed, one of a patch uh, similar to the patch biopsy in June, but the infiltrate is much denser. Notice the expansile micronodular foci around vessels, a greater number of these atypical uh, cells that were discernible in the June biopsy. A biopsy, however, of one of the nodules demonstrated a frankly tumefactive effacing infiltrate of these atypical um, intermediate to larger sized lymphocytes. All of the biopsies that she had showed the identical T cell clone, including that original June of 2021 biopsy. Furthermore, the atypical lymphocytes that were present um, in 
her June biopsy and subsequently um, seen in her November biopsies were basically the same phenotype, which was this atypical lymphocyte that expressed CD8 with a subset of these abnormal cells expressing CD4. So in other words, um, in all of her biopsies, she had this atypical CD8 positive T cell infiltrate, which in a minor subset of the cells expressed CD4. So they were double positive for CD4 and CD8. You can see that these atypical cells are also CD25 positive, while the smaller lymphocytes that are clearly reactive do not express CD25. So to summarize then, there appeared to be progression of an initial type 4 immune response to the vaccine to a progressive atypical lymphomatoid process, whereby throughout the biopsies, there was evidence of an identical T cell clone and a rare unique T cell was implicated in all of these biopsies, but just to varying proportions. Um, namely, this CD25 positive non-regulatory cytotoxic CD8 positive memory T cell which included a subset of T cells that, it, that had a double positive phenotype. The earlier biopsies, like the one from June, could be interpreted as a vaccine triggered or associated CD8 positive T cell lymphoproliferative disorder of non-regulatory CD8 positive memory T cell origin. Well, the subsequent biopsy in November, and then she had more biopsies in 2022, um, were really in the context of a peripheral T cell lymphoma of CD8 positive memory T cell origin as a unique form of immunosenescent lymphoma, as I will discuss presently. So the critical question is, is there a benign T cell counterpart that could be preferentially expanded in response to spike-like protein in the middle age to older age setting? Indeed, there is a rare T cell subset represented by a CD8 positive, CD25 positive, non-regulatory memory T cell population that occurs in healthy elderly persons who have depleted naive T cells. And these cells can show a double positive phenotype. This cell population represents a critical reservoir for launching an intact immune response to viruses and to a vaccine. And in fact, the presence of double positive memory T cells has been correlated with a better outcome. So it, how do we link the spike like a protein needed in type 4 immune reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine associated T cell lymphomatoid reactions? Well, there is a multi-step process involved in lymphomogenesis. We have an initial antigenic stimulus that leads to a clonally restricted T or B cell response. In the setting of underlying adrogenic or endogenous immune dysregulation, uh, this immune response can be overzealous, and then there is subsequent oncogenic transformation of clonally restricted T or B cells that are unrelated to any oncogenic properties of the vaccine or the virus that eventuates into endogenous T or B cell lymphoproliferative disease. And the nature of the adaptive T cell response to spike-like spike protein could determine the type of vaccine-associated lymphomatoid reaction. So in healthy patients, especially younger patients, a robust type for immune response mediated by activated antigen-specific CD4 or CD8 T cells is characteristic, a potential benign reaction in the skin that could be seen under those circumstances would be the classic COVID-19 type for hypersensitive COVID-19 vaccine associated type for hypersensitivity reaction, while the atypical counterpart would be lymphomatoid papulosis. Follicular helper T cells are also preferentially expanded by spike glycoprotein, so the atypical counterpart could be primary cutaneous CD4 positive, small, medium sized pleomorphic T cell lymphoproliferative disorder, as we saw in one case, or angiomatoblastic lymphoma, as it has been previously reported. And then in older individuals where the naive T cell repertoire is significantly diminished, expansion of CD25 positive, CD8 positive T cells occur in response to SARS coronavirus 2 and is certainly protective against severe disease. And then, then we have this atypical counterpart, which would be the CD25 positive, CD8 positive uh, peripheral T cell lymphoma. Thank you very much.